hole right in the floor of my shop. Bunch of snow coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New Jersey. Today in the barn shop, we're going to be continuing work on a welding table here with a helping hand or third hand, whatever you want to call it. And if you can see here on the barn CAD, it's a little faint, but I think you can get the idea. It's basically just made out of this three-quarter, one-eighth square tube here. It'll be this and this. And the business end of it is just half-inch round bar that we're going to grind down and uh, bend in the vise there. And that's going to be a little chompy bit that's spring-loaded to hold things down on the table. So let's get started. We're going to start by building the base of this this clamp section that's going to slide into the slats of the welding table here so you can move it wherever you need it and just going to use the material I have in the most abundance which is 3 16 by 1 inch flat bar and cut out these three pieces here. Okay, got these to size and what we're going to do is lay out these quarter 20 holes right here and shoot them through. I decided while I was at the drill press that I should go ahead and put the half inch hole in the top piece so that I can plug weld in the half inch pivot. What's really important when you fabricate things is to have a really poor understanding of the order of operations, change it often, and really just go with whatever takes you. That's, that's, a, that's a sure plan for success. Also, sure plan for anything in life. All right, we've cut just a little plug of uh, the round bar, about an inch long. Ran a very rough chamfer on it from the bench grinder, and with a bit of luck, this will just go right in there, and we can plug weld it. And of course, it doesn't. We'll. Uh, We'll heat this up and see if we can bang this home. Give me a minute. Tell by the oxide colors that it's getting pretty hot. So that's probably good enough. There you go. I think 100 amps is a little cold for that weld, but it's one hunk of metal now, specifically this hunk of metal. I'm not sure if the paper will catch on fire if I drop it on it right now. It is just off the grinder and welder. So uh, we'll move down to this piece right here, and what we want is a bit of friction material for that to go up against, so we're going to braise a little spot on it right here. Switching to a number 12 cup with the same gas nozzle, same 3 16ths, 2% lanthanated uh, electrode. Uh, Going to be running a very cool 65 amps for this braze. And as with most TIG operations, the key to brazing is surface preparation. So we're going to wipe down a rod and wipe down a work with a bit of acetone.
because the brass will only wet to the steel when there's no oxide on it. So we get all the schmoo off the rod and off the work that we can. Didn't work so great. So if you just keep throwing metal at it, it'll melt together eventually. And yeah, that's what happened there. Not great, but should work well enough. Give a grind this flat, give it something to bite against the steel. I have to say, I really like this moving slat structure. It's really great at work holding. Uh, So these little neodymium magnets here are the same thickness as the walls of these slats. So I'm just going to use those and a box cutter blade to set the thickness. Okay, that turned out pretty good. So remember what I said about order of operations? Yeah, obviously there's not enough room to get the regular tap through here. I suppose I could do this if I had bottom out taps, but I don't. Um, so the least ass achy solution was just to continue the holes through the other side. That's how that works. Now we just got to make the vertical portion of it. And one more thing, this needs to be a little quarter 20 hole right there just to keep this from lifting up this way. But so that finishes this piece. I got the cap about halfway down this hole. I drilled all the way through this inch of half inch round. Uh, but I didn't want to go all the way through because I didn't want to risk breaking my only quarter 20 tap. I'd really be hooped if that happened. I mean, Home Depot's like a mile away, so it'd be hard to get another one. Um, 
But yeah, so that's that finished. Now we just need a little spot of this, just about, you know, that long. So we've cut this little piece of steel here. Fits right over there like that. Sides down, actually. And this little tiny bit of sheet metal here. I weld to it there. And we put a hole through it with a cap screw for it to hold this piece down. So we cleaned it up, put a hole through there, and it roughly lines up, and I was kind of expecting that, so I oversized this. You can see this is a 5 sixteenths instead of a quarter inch, just because I know the level of workmanship I'm not capable of, and I could easily miss that quarter inch hole. I've got the rest of the steel mostly cut for the vertical section. Uh, this has been ground flat. This will just weld right on top of it. And then this piece will form a cradle that will carry the trunnion for the top piece that will articulate thusly. Um, so what I'm going to do is drill this hole and then cut this in half and weld it to either side of this. Okay, we're just going to hold this here with these two magnets, roughly square and in line. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then we'll just tack, take the magnets off, and weld the rest. Okay, so we got this welded together and welded these on while you weren't looking. Uh, had to charge my phone up. Uh, it's ooh, hotter than a $2 pistol right now. Uh, I'm just going to put that back down on the bench there for a minute. So we've laid out the holes we're going to cut for the quarter 20 screws and for the trunnion here on the side. So we'll just have to take this over to the drill press and shoot them in. So if I've been saying trunnion this whole time and you've been saying what the hell is that, now you know, it's these things here, just like what a cannon rides on. And I'm just going to give those a quick tack, and that'll be enough for them. So now we just take this here, spring them a thing, loop it in there. Put this one that way, and now oh, we could do with a little bit of more preload there. Let's see, what can we do about that? I want it about there. Have to move that other hook right down. About a uh, About an inch or two. Let's see if we can do that.
had a bit of a brainwave there. Decided rather than try and shove the melting ER-70 into melting steel and have that somehow work out while the arc was still going on and everything like that, that I would use silicon bronze to build up a bead right there and then shove the ER-70 into it. A little bit of changing hands and trying to do that in the dark and arc light and all that, but seems to have worked out. And I uh, wrestled with the TIG wire enough to finally work out a good spring preload there that looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. Ready to move on to the main event. Bending our half inch stock, wherever it went. This is starting to look modestly successful. Bar is still hot. But this is, yeah, we got a good bit of spring pressure that doesn't take too much effort. A little bit of movement. Been called upon. I could use some work. I could use some work. And we can even set this in at different angles. I was going to grind a flat on it, but. If you need to come at her at an odd angle, we got that we got that built into her. 
All right. Cool. I'll just grind. I think I'll grind a point on it. I think that's the. I think that's the answer. All right. A little quality time on the bench grinder. And made a decent point. We can move this around, set it up, move wherever we need it on the table, use these set screws, get the reach we need, either close in or way out, and hold work down where we need it. Probably get a decent ground through it, maybe, maybe not. Uh, so I'm declaring victory on this one. Thanks for hanging out with me and watching the video. I'll see you later, and I'll try better next time.